All right, welcome back to the Hypo Driver Barn, as I like to call it. Uh, last week, someone on the channel asked a really good question, which is, what is a GSR? Uh, if you watch the channel, you've seen I post a lot of track videos of me and the track in this car. Um, GSR is frankly just a name I came up with to, to capture this build. So this really started after I wrecked my ZR1 at the track and was trying to figure out what my next step was going to be. So I thought I'd uh, really see how far can I take the C7 platform and build just the most uncompromising track only version of that car that I possibly could. And so I had a couple things in mind. I wanted to have performance uh, similar or better to the C7 ZR1, which was a pretty tall order. It was a pretty awesome car. Uh, but I also wanted to make it a lot lighter. Frankly, one of the ZR1's uh, kind of Achilles heels was just the weight, and frankly, it was hard on consumables. So I wanted to try to see how light I could make a C7 knowing that it would never have to be a street car. So this here is, is basically the, the almost finished project. Uh, I think there's still more, more work to do around aero. I'm still doing a little bit of suspension tuning, but I think all the right parts are there. And um, it started life as a 2019 Grand Sport. Uh, you know, big shout out to Mike Furman at Chriswell. I've bought five C7 Corvettes from him and a C8. Um, guy's been phenomenal. And so after I told him what happened to the ZR1, basically put it in order for a Grand Sport. So this was a 2019, and I really wanted a new one because I wanted all the little improvements they'd made to the C7 over the generation. Um, but this is a 1LT, PDR was really the only option I got. Um, I think in retrospect, I kind of wish I'd gotten uh, the HUD. I didn't really think about it at the time. But that was the starting point. Um, if you look on Corvette Forum, there was actually a build thread that I did, and I still update every once in a while. Um, but here we are. So I'm going to start at the back of the car. I'm actually going to do this video in, in two parts. Uh, I'll do kind of above, and then I'll do the underneath shot kind of suspension uh, drivetrain. So first thing you'll see is I have what is the ZR1 wing on the car. Uh, in the wreck, the ZR1 wing was, was actually damaged. Um, I kind of held on to it as a, a little souvenir. Didn't seem like it was any good. Um, but I took it to a, when this project got going and I thought, well, I'd like to have a wing. I'd like to have something that's a little bit of a carryover. Uh, I took it to Klaus Composites and they make a lot of the parts for like Turner Motorsports and they were able to fix this thing up so well that it's just, you really can't even tell. There's like a small spot that they pointed out to me on this side where the weave just doesn't quite line up, but it's phenomenal. So at least for now, I'm running the ZR1 wing. Uh, as you see it here, it's actually sitting in the, the more aggressive angle of attack. But in the back of the car, as you can see, this thing's been fully gutted. Uh, the cage was done by Piper Motorsports. Uh, Mitch and his crew are just fantastic. They did the cage in my C6. You know, they kind of have a specialty around putting cages in aluminum frame Corvettes. And I think this was actually the first C7 they'd done. Um, so you'll see there's a couple of unique things we had to do. So in the back here, um, obviously the interior is gone. Uh, we have a fire suppression system. I know someone's going to comment on why I don't have an electrical automatic fire suppression system. Uh, honestly, after Mark Patronus's interest, that's something I'm, I'm looking at doing. Um, but at least for now it's manual and I also have a chill out system. So, um, this has really been a huge improvement for me. I'm a big guy. I sweat a lot. It's hot. It's hot in the car. Uh, there's no AC as you'll see. So having that really helps. Uh, big thanks again. I'm just going to kind of give shout outs to people that helped me along the way. Um, I'm not sponsored. Nobody's paying me for this stuff, but, um, Don at TMI really is a guy that helped me get the chill out system kind of ordered, spec'd, refined. Um, and then Mitch actually is who, Piper Motorsports is who actually mounted it in the car for me because I wanted to make sure that was done right. So just a view of the back, the back of the cage. You can see the harnesses. You can see the hose running um, to the chill out system. Uh, you may notice I actually have it unplugged. Uh, it does have a small kind of parasitic draw. So I just leave it unplugged when I'm not using the car. And then kind of coming around, we'll look a little bit at this side of the car and then I'll walk around and get inside. But here you can see it's the incredibly uh, sophisticated hose zip tied to the roll bar <laughs> feeding the, uh, the chill out system. Uh, a NACA duct is probably a good idea here in the near future. The roof you'll see is a uh, carbon fiber. Uh, this is actually a KTEC uh, carbon fiber roof skin. 
Uh, you'll see why here in a second. That was actually needed for us to do the roll cage in the way we wanted to do it. So let's go ahead and open up the car, take a look inside. So first thing is the window, windows are gone. Uh, obviously the window frames are gone. That's to make room for the NASCAR door bars. Uh, I'm sure someone will critique the form of the door bars. Seems like everybody's got different opinions on this. Uh, the seats themselves are OMP HTE RXLs. Again, I'm kind of a big guy. Went into OG racing, sat in everything they had until I found something that I was comfortable in. So I got two of those. Um, and of course I got my harnesses, my you know, Schroth six points. And then looking into the, uh, the driver's compartment, big thing is the sequential transmission. So this is a uh, PPG Tremec uh, six-speed conversion. So um, the gear ratios are actually really low. I got to pick the gear ratios from a number of sets they had. Um, the easiest way I think about it is uh, like third gear is like second gear in the stock trans. Um, and it's just a super close. I can upshift you know, full throttle, keep it to the floor, upshift without having to lift, downshifts, I don't have to lift at all, does a spark cut, exineering provides the, uh, the electronics for that, I'll actually go around and show you that in a second here, um, but you, you can see kind of Mitch and his guys, uh, they did a couple of nice uh, touches, so they made this little panel here, place to mount the, uh, the mode knob, because I had no interior, it's all gone, uh, mounted the chill out system, the fire handle, uh, I got to have them go back and mount me something for the uh, emergency brake because I had initially taken that out and then added it back in. Here you can see where, where KTEC had to actually uh, cut a hole to uh, make room for the, the sequential mechanism. And then up on the dash, that's for my, uh, my Garmin Catalyst. So I literally have the mount screwed into the dash uh, and uh, also double-sided taped underneath the screws just in case the screws come loose. Now, looking at the cage, a couple things are interesting. Um, hopefully you can see this. So the normal C7 roof frame is going to come down to like here. And then if you put the bar below that, it's going to be super hard to get in and out of the car, particularly if you can't get the door open. So uh, what we did after talking to Jason at KTEC is really decided to do this roof skin. So hopefully you can see... What we've done here is taken just a raw roof skin with no frame and created brackets, bonded the brackets to the carbon fiber roof skin, and then bolted those brackets to the cage itself. So there is no roof frame. There's just brackets bolted to the cage itself. I also went up here and I added this little, uh, I think it's a long acre mirror. Can't say I love it. Um, frankly, it's hard to see who's behind you. Um, Honestly, I did it because the stock mirror kept moving under just the vibration and kind of all the, you know, movement of the car while you're out on track. So I was looking for something that was solid mounted and this guy could just mount to the roll bar itself. So that's a quick look on this side. On the inside, I'm going to go around and just show you kind of the electronics piece that Exineering did. So here you can see we've got the exineering control box mounted to the right hand side of the, the tunnel there. Um, I also have, you'll see like this red cable, this is actually for the DSC Sport controller. So um, I wanted to make it really easy to get in there and change the calibration on the shocks. So I basically ran the cable up across the, the windshield cowl and then down. So now it's in the, in the footwell and it's easy to get to. This other cable here is actually for doing logging on the exineering controller. Um, if I need to do that out on track. And then um, I have basically a laptop or um, a small laptop that I can just actually Velcro zip tie to this uh, seat to do logging out on track. So coming around to the front, this is really the belly of the beast here. Um, this is the KTEC 427 seven liter LT1. So. This started life as, you know, a regular LT1, but 465 horsepower. Um, they bored it out to, you know, seven liters. Um, it's got an MSD intake. It's got a big cam. It's got piston squirters. It's got forged internals, forged crank. 
Um, when they put this thing on the engine dyno on race gas, it made right at 750 horsepower. Um, on, uh, on pump gas at the wheels, because I had them tune it for 93 octane, because frankly, one of my goals here was to try to reduce consumable costs. So I didn't want to run $9 a gallon or more uh, 100 octane. I wanted to run just 93, which is still stupid expensive with the track. Um, but even on pump gas, it still made, I believe it was 640 horsepower at the wheels. So um, pretty stout. You can see we've got, um, let me come around this side actually. So it's got an ARE dry sump system. It's actually a four stage dry sump. Um, I'm gonna grab a light bar here so maybe we can see a little more down in there. All right, so a couple of nice things. I mean, first off, you know, uh, K-Tech, when they did the, the clutch, it's a RPS, I think it's an RPS clutch. Let's see if I can get that one right. And you know, they put a clutch bleeder in for me. That's this thing right here. It's also an airy with the Spintrick air oil separator. That's right here. And then if you look, you can see um, that's the K-Tech oil cooler that's mounted behind the radiator fan. So um, I had them take the air conditioning out. That was one of the things we did uh, to try to save weight and also for cooling. I just didn't want to have an AC condenser sitting in front of the radiator. So this is a stock GM, you know, 2019, which is a better radiator, but a stock radiator. And, Frankly, coolant temps have never been a problem. So, um, of course, we got a catch can. Frankly, it's a little bit of a pain to be constantly checking and emptying catch can, but kind of a necessary evil. And then, um, yeah, you know, pretty valve covers. See a little bit of oversprays from some uh, brake clean. I was just, you know, replacing the brakes and spilled some brake fluid everywhere. But that's really the engine. So. Um, that's probably, I think, all we'll look at as far as the outside. Um, if you have any questions, again, post up. Uh, well, one more thing since I'm, I'm staring at it right now. If you see this little plug right here, there are those two things. So one, this, uh, this red handle is for the fire suppression. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This red handle is for um, the door release. So well, I realize that probably looks like a fire suppression. It's going to be a little confusing, but my, my concern was, you know, if I'm stuck, and I can't get the door open or someone comes up to the car and the door won't open. You know, you've got a manual release, but it's all the way down on the floor. So I just wanted to run a cable. This is actually using the, um, the um, running a cable up here to release the door. And then this right here is just the uh, cable I've run for the uh, Garmin. So that plugs right into my helmet. So, all right, let me know if you have any questions. We'll kind of wrap up part one with this. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and we'll put her up in the air and take a look at the underside. Oh, oh, one more thing, one more thing. I guess I'm making this up as I go. Um, if you recall, or if you've been watching the channel, uh, last year I unceremoniously stuffed it into the tire wall at turn 10 at some point. Um, that tore up the front clip and the uh, front splitter. Uh, my plans are to go, you know, get a real serious splitter with a, you know, actual tunneled splitter. Um, but I did have the front clip repainted. It's already chipping off. But this uh, splitter was frankly really inexpensive and it was from Extreme Online and it's slightly bigger and you'll see when I get it up in the air, it basically leverages the factory uh, under tray, which is you know, actually somewhat uh, tunneled, or not tunneled, but um, you know, a little bit of an underwing um, and seems to balance out pretty well with the wing. Actually really, really surprised by that. So all right, let's uh, put it up in the air and take a look underneath.